Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of B is for Build. We're here working on the Lamborghini Murcielago project. This thing has been crashed, rolled over, sold at auction, abandoned, unabandoned, and now it's here in our shop for the wildest ride of its life. Rumor has it this car was driving about 100 miles an hour down a backcountry road when a corner made a corner and the driver did not make a corner. Then had some of this going on, then it got sold at auction, and then it got sold to me as the cheapest Lamborghini Murcielago sale ever in recorded history. 30,000 bucks. So we got to work on this car, gutting the entire interior, getting all the mud and the dirt and debris out, taking a look at the engine, fixing what was wrong with the engine, getting it to run properly, getting it to go into gear, fixing up all the frame damage, and even applying a few new body panels here and there. In the wreck, all of the suspension components on the passenger side of the car were damaged badly. Knuckles were blasted into pieces, control arms bent, brake lines destroyed, tons of stuff. In today's episode, we're gonna get new knuckles, new suspension components, new everything installed on this thing, and then we're gonna install a full airlift performance air ride system on this car. So it's gonna be a air spring over coil air suspension system on this car and get it running on all four wheels for the first time. Let's get started. So we're gonna go ahead and get started by getting all of our control arms, our hubs, our knuckles, our rotors, our calipers, all of this stuff kind of back in order where it needs to be, plumb back together, because there's a lot of new replacement parts and a lot of stuff kind of changing. So we'll get everything kind of closer back to square one, and then we're gonna focus on the rebuilding of the suspension system. So in the front and the rear here, these, the knuckles and the, the, the systems that hold the caliper and the rotors, they were just kind of blasted into pieces uh, in, a, in a big way. Wheels were destroyed, these were destroyed. Uh, so it was kind of starting from square one. Let me show you what we got with the vehicle. So the previous owner had purchased these brand new from Lamborghini and what these are is, we, we call these knuckles, some people call them hubs. Uh, and they are, this one's the front and this one's the rear and these big, big beefy bolting faces, these are where our um, calipers bolt to rotors go on the faces of these and these were bought brand new so then we needed um, wheel bearings as well they were purchased brand new anytime you have a massive wreck like that does any significant damage got to get new wheel bearings or they will moan and groan until the day that they finally stop working so that's a imperative thing um, we managed to source all of these little guys which we'll show you what they do later but they screw in here and here and here, and they cost a small fortune. So sourcing those and finding those um, within the parts that Andrew sent us was, was golden. We got all those in there. And so the only thing that we did off camera is we pressed our new wheel bearings into these things. And when I say we, it wasn't us. We don't own a press to do that. So that's a service. We just went out, we paid a hundred bucks and we got both of these wheel bearings pressed and they came back to us like this. So now they are ready to rock and roll. So we're gonna start on the front end first and we'll start basically mock installing and setting everything up. So we have a fully functioning um, front end and everything bolted up to it. Front passenger side is almost wrapped up and uh, something that we didn't expect to have to do, but we ended up doing is the, the previous brake line was a little too damaged. So we went back a little bit further and Oscar patched into the hard line there. We extended the hard line out and then we're into a brand new steel braided brake line that's going to go into our caliper as soon as that's ready. It's getting a little bit of fix up and uh, we're jumping into the back now as well. And that caliper needs some fix up as well. Let me show you what's going on. So in the crash, the caliper took a little bit of a, a, a hit right here, which um, this is a steel brake line that runs to push fluid from one side of the piston to the other and it's it's been damaged but it's not damaged well it's damaged beyond repair but not it not that it's not easily replaced so you just basically unscrew this here and here cut the steel brake line out of it grab some new steel brake line material you know just brake line and and run your own um, little loop guy and put it back together and this caliper will be good as new other than the obvious cosmetic damage which is a that's a problem for future. Kyle's back. Welcome back, Kyle. Kyle's got a new brake line ran right through here. 
really well done. I'm super happy about that. So this guy's ready to go in the rear. As you saw, Oscar just wrapped up in the front. We're getting really close to having our rotors, calipers, brake lines, uh, and all the control arms back into position. That's awesome. So an exciting next step. So we've got the rotor, we've got the e-brake, we've got new e-brake cabling ran, we've got the actual brake and new brake lines ran on both the rear and the front. So we have a, a whole setup, a whole knuckle, a whole control arm setup to, uh, to mount that wheel to and make this thing a roller. But you might notice that we're missing one very key important part suspension. So in the back here, one of the coilover shocks was just blown apart. It got split in two. The other one was leaking really badly. Um, and they are very uh, prone to failure on this vehicle. Uh, Ed Bullion, the uh, Murcielago guru of, of planet Earth, uh, let us know that. And so we kept that in mind when we were thinking about new suspension options. And we also kept in mind that the front has a hydraulic lift. So the front is a coilover shock with a hydraulic lift set up right there. Lifts the front just a little bit. As far as we know, the front did not need to be replaced, but it's getting replaced. With all of this amazing stuff, Airlift Performance just sent us a huge Christmas present, all new suspension for this vehicle. So um, Huracons and this Murcielago, they both run something that is similar to this. This is a builder series right here. This is the compact bellows style that we're gonna be running in the front. And then in the back, this car uses a dual uh, coilover setup. So we've got a dual shock setup and this is the sleeve style. So we've got four of those and two of these. This is a super, super cool setup. And anyways, what I was gonna explain guys is that on a, on a Huracan and on this Murcielago, what we have is a, on the Huracan it uses air, on the Murcielago it uses fluid. So as uh, Lamborghinis tiptoeing towards the future, they're, uh, they've, they've moved away from using fluid and using air, started using air. And so that's uh, very much what we're doing here. So this is a, this is a shock and, um, it's a little bit hard to show you guys with one hand, but I can compress this with my hand and it's not just pure air. There's a shock inside there and you can see it slowly rebound there too. And you've got the, um, the stiffness settings right there so you can make it harder or softer. So it is a shock with like an air spring. So this is actually exactly what Lamborghini uses on their vehicle as far as from an engineering standpoint, it's just we have a lot more throw in our air spring. We have a lot more compression or extension because this is an air suspension setup. So in my opinion, it's like the best of both worlds. It's exactly how Lamborghini did it, but we have a bag that's a little bit bigger that's gonna allow us to lower our ride height to be super, super low and then go up hopefully super, super high so we can get this car in my driveway. So. I could finally drive a car home. Yeah, since the day I bought my house, I've never been able to take any of my like sports cars home because none of them fit in my driveway. It kind of sucks. Hopefully this one will. So I mentioned before, these are the Builder Series and all of these six shocks that you see are all from their Builder Series. And what that is, is obviously Airlift, they sell a ton of kit for, tons of kits for tons of different cars. So if you have a very common car, they're gonna have a kit out there. But if you're like us and you're builders and you're retrofitting and doing custom work, they have this Builder Series, which is, it's got so much configuration, uh, options to it and so many different variable options that you're you're pretty much going to always be able to find something that's going to work for your application so in ours we need to emulate something like this shock right here so that's eye to eye and so they sell these in that configuration but you can see right here they have them in eye to stud trunnion to stud trunnion to eye so they have a lot of different configurations to be able to like different flavors to help you match up with your application or if you're just building completely from scratch you know you can build to these specs eye to eye is pretty much the most um i would say like universal when you're looking at race car builds and stuff like that so that was really cool and um so the way i did this is, is they have different lengths as well and these uh so you can um, screw these down to change the lengths and then they have a certain amount of adjustability in there so you can actually see that when i set these things close to each other um i went with at max extension 
being the lowest setting right here on our length. So then we can always make sure that we can go a little bit taller and then we can use the air system to go down lower. So that's how I measured these is I just pulled off one of my shocks, let it com be completely expanded, measured from eye to eye. And then on their website, they've got a huge chart of whether or not you want the long, the medium or the short version of these guys. And our application landed us to going long on all of them. So that's how we figured out the sizing. I'm pretty dang sure that we got it right, but if not, there's a ton of adjustability in there, so then we'll make it right. And now is the exciting part. Let's start test fitting a few of these onto the car. We went ahead and tested out the back first since this is definitely the tightest fit and the most complicated. So with our control arms, we had pre-measured, they, they have the diameters of all of these different styles listed on their website and we had pre-measured them to make sure that they would fit. Um, it is obviously very close, but nothing is touching. So let's go ahead and test out actuation, Oscar pump away. And this is, so you can see it, it gains more and more and more space as it actually would, uh, this would emulate making the car go lower. So this is super cool. Oh. And that's what it looks like when it gets taller. So it is working very, very nicely and you're able to, you know, articulate your suspension to test these things out and check them out and look at them before you commit. We're leaving everything loose until we get the airlines on and everything on there and make sure we're really happy with everything before we tighten it down for the final tightening. got the rear suspension mounted on the driver's side. We were going to start lowering the car down, but we, we already know that this thing articulates and looks good. So I think we're going to go ahead and actually fully plumb this stuff out before we, we go ahead and test. So now we're moving on into the front. Now the front, like I said, it has a hydraulic lift that shares fluid with the power steering system, which is very odd. So if you have a shock failure, you could also have a power steering failure as well. Um, we're, you know, we're going to just eliminate that, uh, that worry from the system and it will now have a air lift instead. So we're going to take out our uh, front shock, um, cap off that line so we don't lose any of our power steering fluid. And then we will get our um, bellows style, excuse me, compact bellows style shock in there. Here's what the standard OEM Murcielago shocks look like off of the car. Coil over with a hydraulic lift. Not exactly sure where the hydraulic lift comes in. It might do it here. Not really sure. Um, and then we've got our air system on here. It's fitting in very, very nicely. And we are ready to start plumbing our lines. So airlift performance sent us these pneumatic hard lines right here that are going into each one. Uh, we've got a ton of fittings and these are the quick connect, push to connect fittings that are gonna run into each of the bags. And we're gonna run a T, we ran down to the store and we run a T in the rear. Um, so we connect the two bags in the rear to one line that then goes to the manifold and reads pressure. That way we'll read pressure on both at once. Pretty slick stuff. I'm excited to get this in here. So we're gonna go ahead and start plumbing all the lines for everything up to the front where we're gonna keep the manifold.
We've got all the airlines ran. So you got the two rears and then the two fronts. They're all kind of coming up through the tunnel and we got them all just poking out of the front here in a nice fun way. These are still connected. We're gonna chop these guys. So they all run into the manifold. So in the manifold you have four inputs, one for each corner of the vehicle. You've got the air tank input and then you have an exhaust port. So that's gonna be the, the setup. Oscar is gonna start building what we call this, kind of our, our base. It's gonna have our air tanks and our compressors on it. The manifold is most likely not gonna be on the base though. We're gonna probably try and find a nice place to put it. We gotta look at how these um, hard lines want to be, well, they're like plastic hard lines, uh, how they wanna be uh, ran, cause you can't kink them, you know? So we gotta make sure that we can make a nice, a nice angled shot into every spot that it needs to go. So I'm gonna work on that and connecting the lines up to the manifolds. Oscar is gonna take our old yacht tabletop. Yeah, we made it in the wrong direction. So this is just a really good piece of wood. And we're gonna go ahead and cut this to be the shape of the bottom of the frunk so we can start bolting everything to it and make it all nice. Eventually we'll put felt on it. Uh, or actually, do we have uh, felt left over from the Mustang build? I think we do, yeah. Yeah, so if we do, we'll actually felt it up right now. And then we will, uh, you know, get it, get all that stuff uh, mounted so then we can get it in, in here here in the base we can run the wires um, underneath if we want to and keep it all really clean and nice looking. Oscar got the uh, the new wooden floor uh, built out and felt it in. I got the OEM piece in here notched out and all the hoses running through here. Our um, manifold is gonna run right about here. This is technically upside down. We're gonna switch this faceplate around so it doesn't look bad. It's technically upside down. You're not supposed to do this because you could get water ingress in, into your thing, but there's not gonna be any water in here because it's very sealed off. So we're gonna risk it. Um, on this system, because we are running six bags, Airlift Performance said that our, their engineering team said we need to run dual tank and dual pump. So we, I would much rather run single tank and single pump but they said it's just too much, too much air to uh, to do it that way. So we're gonna we're following their instructions and we're gonna fit this in here somehow. This is the only cargo space in the entire car, so it's very precious to me. We're putting an auxiliary battery down here. We built this whole new tray out. Oh yeah, I didn't show you guys Oscar building this whole thing out. Okay, now that I showed you guys Oscar building that whole thing out, uh, back to what we were talking about. Now we're gonna go ahead and mount this tank to this thing right here, the pumps behind that, the pumps behind that, and then we're gonna build some sort of a, uh, a, a nice looking little connector piece that's gonna bolt into this tank, and then the, it'll come up and guide itself up to bolt into this tank, and it's gonna have a little bit of a lean to it. So this tank's gonna be bolted to this tank, and this tank's gonna be bolted to our new floor with the two pumps bolted behind there. Manifold gets bolted into this piece right here.
Things are mounted, things are plumbed. So we've got this piece of wood that we talked about, the two tanks. Now we mounted the tanks to each other so we could stack vertically a little bit, giving us this amount of room right here, which we've conveniently uh, filled with a, a battery. Um, the electrical system on this car is gonna be a somewhat complicated thing, but basically, in my opinion, the battery that they have for this vehicle is it's one dedicated battery. It has very, very little room and it stores right back behind here. Um, it's barely enough to crank this engine. The voltage drop is significant and it, that's a brand, brand new battery and it's really expensive. So I want to add more power. So what I did was I rang up a company and I got a 100 amp hour lithium ion battery coming on the way and the game plan is for it to store right in here. Uh, but that's not here yet. So we're mocking everything up with this and we're gonna run our test with this and then we can uh, finish out our wiring. So back to the setup. We've got our two air compressors back here plumbed into our tanks. Our tanks are joined and then the tanks run um, um, out from this bottom one up and then into our um, manifold which I'm trying to clean as I speak and I'm not doing a very good job they run into our manifold the manifold is controlled by the software which in the long run basically comes back to this keypad right here which will be inside the car with me also it can connect up with uh, Bluetooth so you can control it with your smartphone as well now we're like I said this is all just mocked up because we want to start testing it in the long run power is going to be sourced from here uh, that's all going to be tied back to the alternator and then we're going to run these controls into the interior but obviously our interior is you know not finalized yet so uh but oscar let's go ahead and uh let's give it the let's give it the power we're doing this just totally live for the first time we have not tried this at all so the system now has power and then this is um the ignition wire which you would make hot when you are turning your car on so go ahead and do that and now we start learning about how to turn the system on. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing happened. Okay, when you look in your install kit, you're gonna see these two fuses. These two fuses go inside the fusible connections that go to the system. So yeah, you won't have power if you don't have the fuses in the system. Yep. There you go. Trying again. There we go. With fuses. Oh. Hey, there we go. We got the light up. Okay, we're gonna go through this real quick. Ooh. We got both the air compressors running, tanks filled up to 143 PSI right now, and we've been testing our um, calibration, setting max pressures and stuff like that, and we noticed that we have a leak in on this side over here. So as we're testing it and sending air to the system, um, it's lowering the PSI, and then you can actually actively hear it coming out of here. So we're gonna go ahead and work on fixing this leak real quick, and then we'll set its max pressure. We got through the calibration, we fixed the leak. It was just one of our push to connect fittings. We did not push hard enough. We've got pressure in all of the uh, corners here. It's it's not even, it's on manual mode, so it's, it's not even yet. But uh, we need to get wheels and tires, and we've got some wheels and tires for this build now. Let me tell you a little bit about them. The wheels and tires on this car are gonna be a very interesting project. It's a long, long-term project. In the short term, our friends over at Koenig have been kind enough to hook us up with wheels. Our friends over at Nitto have been kind enough to hook us up with tires. This car, I, I have to tell you right now, this is the part where I have to spoil it. Uh, we are going wide body on this build. It is going to be wide. It is custom. We have a design for it. Um, the, now is the time you find out because obviously when we put the wheels on here, it's going to look a little wider than, wider than normal. Uh, stay tuned to the end of the episode. I will explain the whole game plan the long-term game plan for the wheels on this build i think you're absolutely going to love it and it's actually all made possible because of you guys so it's kind of a it's a pretty cool uh pretty cool thing in my opinion but let me show you around the wheels and tires that we got that we're going to be running on this so the wheel that we're going to be running on this for now is the neo form it's a high it's a flow form wheel very high performance wheel and i love the design of it it's going to look really good on this car as well with it being a five spoke and this has a special place in our heart because we actually got to debut this wheel at sema on our r69 uh, gtr so I, I really love this wheel and uh, Koenig was kind enough to send these out for us and let us run these, test different color patterns if we want to, and all that good stuff. Um, and like I said, so Koenig is known for making really, really good high performance wheels that are lightweight, very strong, very durable. They're used in all sorts of motorsport racing and they're very economical. So they're very, they're very attainable and I absolutely love the brand for that. That's what we're all about here. And speaking of that, then we're onto our Nitto tires. So this is a, a NT555 G2 tire. We've ran this on a ton of builds. You're also gonna see the Formula Drift drivers running these as well. It's a super, super good tire and it's, it's nice and affordable. And we're running these in an extremely aggressive stance, which is what we plan on doing long run. Heavy, heavy meat on this build. So we got tons of grip. This is a 305 square. So 305 width on the front and in the rear. So these are definitely going to stick out past the fenders. And this one, just eyeballing it, looking at that, plus that fender, I really don't know if this is all gonna fit. So we're gonna 
we're going to just start test fitting stuff right now and see how it looks. We've got wheels on the car for the first time. All four corners have wheels. We have suspension. Now you might notice the front wheels don't match the rear wheels. Chris made some mistakes while ordering. Sometimes you think, well, we're going wide body, so we'll just cut out stuff to make the space and blah, blah, blah. And then you remember, yeah, turning radius is a thing. And that thing, way too big. Also had problems with some adaptation. Nothing to fear though, just different type of temporary wheel on the front and, and, uh, and we proceed. So just don't mind that for now. Oscar, would you like to do so? We're gonna go ahead and bring it down for the first time onto its own suspension. We have no idea which, you know, at this level of air pressure, if it's gonna stay just full height where it's at, if it's gonna sag down and hopefully not like break body panels. Come with us on this journey to find out. How, okay, looking good. Whoop, up, up, up. Uh, I, yeah, the back is, back is staying strong. The front is squishy. So the back at the air pressure that we had, man, that's close. So this is weird, right? We didn't change the axle position or any position on this vehicle as far as how that works. And look how freaking close that is to the body work. So this wheel was built in this car to be much more favored towards that way. And you can actually see that this wheel is favoring that way. Very strange. Now, let's play with the air settings. That is a lot of fun. This thing, there's a lot, I gotta learn how to control all this and do our stuff a lot faster, but that's, uh, it's very exciting. It's very, very fun. Um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, test the uh, front bumper right now to see some ground clearance at full ride height. This is as high as the system goes, the way that we've designed it. Now, if our control arms and our sway bars allow, we can crank these to be longer, meaning get the car higher up off the ground. Uh, but what we wanna test right now and see is, you know, how high is this front bumper coming off of the ground to uh, get me into my driveway at home? Uh, and we know it goes low enough, that's for sure. Uh, the question is gonna be, how much do we wanna cut off the car to go lower and lower? Okay, with the back down and the front all the way up, it's pretty dang high off the ground. That is really definitely achieving what we were hoping for. Oscar measured it and said it's eight and a half inches. I know a stock Tesla Model 3 makes it into my driveway. My brother just, uh, just bought one, drove it into my driveway. Let's go, I have a not stock Tesla Model 3. It has a razor blade for a front measurement point. You guys want a quick shop tour? I know we haven't talked about this. Camper truck, Porsche that I don't like, so I haven't worked on it in a while. V10 Datsun, BMW M5 powered Datsun. Oscar's Mustang, Supra, R69 GTR. Uh, surprise car, Tesla, Jumpicon, Burntacon, Huracan, White Mustang, DeLorean. New SEMA Mustang that we just stole a battery out of. And that race car. That leaves Aston Martin and the Evora in long-term storage, plus a single-seater and another white race car. And that's mainly the collection, besides a bunch of Teslas that are still in my backyard. How tall is that? That's nine inches? Nine inches, give or take. Give or take. Now that's riding super high because it has no weight on it anymore, so it was probably definitely less than eight inches. I think we got enough uh, enough ground clearance. Yeah, that's, that's just gotta be enough ground clearance. And you can start to tell how mean this car is gonna look with the wide body on, because this, this wheel actually, even though it doesn't poke out as much as the other one, gives us a nice, inch and a half poke. This is gonna be mean. Oh, I'm so happy about this. I'm so happy we went with air too. Huge thank you to all the sponsors that made all of this stuff possible. We have Airlift Performance. There's gonna be a link in, in the description. Airlift Performance. They also sent a height kit and that comes with height sensors and you're gonna see us install those later on. But for right now, since we don't know our limitations because we haven't cut our body yet, uh, it, it wouldn't do a lot to install them, but they are height sensors that tell exactly where your car is and then you can build presets for uh, the height and it'll, it'll keep your ride height just where you want it. Um, and that's an addition they sent to us. So super, super cool stuff. I'll have links to every piece, every different piece and product that they have in the descriptions as well as Koenig wheels for these awesome Neoforms and Nitto for these tires. Luckily, so they fit in the back. So we're just gonna have to completely destroy a set of rears and then we'll have an extra set of rears for daily driving. And I do, I do like the meaty look. And then on the front, we're gonna have to downsize our wheel package. Maybe we go to an 18, like what we have here. We go to an 18 and we keep the meat on it like it has, or we go back up to a 19 and we do a little bit smaller tire so we can get an actual turn radius. Because we are limited, we can cut some of the body off here, but we can't cut into the cabin to be able to turn this wheel. So guys in the comments, please do let me know what you think. 
Okay, I figured out the presets on the on the remote here. Check this out. Double tap. Boop. <laughs> That's pretty cool. The front needs a little more added pressure to go all the way up. And then, if we want to go all the way down. Yes! We're checking our kind of stockpile of wheel adapters that we've got in the back to see if we've got anything that maybe we can get a... Uh, Another Neoform on the front. Anyways, while I'm doing that, I want to talk to you guys about the long-term game plan for wheels on this build. It's pretty cool because it's something that you guys enabled to happen. So these are the wheels that survived the crash. This is a front and this is a rear and they are both from the driver's side. You can see the force from the crash pulled this whole tire inside out. Uh, this thing has a lot, a lot of uh, concave to it, a lot of, a lot of dish to it. Well, it doesn't actually have dish, but it's a very unique looking wheel and I, I absolutely love it. And so do a lot of other people online because a fresh set of these wheels is $10,000, which is pretty crazy. And uh, as soon as I showed these on the channel, everybody was hitting me up. Hey, can I buy those? Can I buy those? And I thought, oh, maybe I should sell them. And then I thought, well, wait a minute. We could do something really cool here, but I would need four of them. So in the last episode, I told you guys we have new merch. Like, how do I show you my back right now when I'm the one holding the camera? This hoodie, it says BS Build on the front. And YouTube certified automotive technician on the back. We made a bunch of cool merch, and I told you guys that every time you buy merch, it helps uh, all the proceeds go directly towards these builds and help us make them bigger and badder. So I know how much you guys like having the correct wheels on the correct build. I took all the proceeds uh, from the merch sales, and I bought two more of these Lamborghini Murcielago, they're a style called the Hercules wheels. I bought two more, one more front and one more rear. Now the next phase of this to make these wheels work on a wide body build is going to be making them, converting them into three piece wheels. Now you've probably seen this being done, it's getting more and more popular. We take an OEM style wheel, you cut the whole rest of the barrel off of it, you use the face as the face or the centerpiece, and then you put a lip and a barrel on there, converting it into a three-piece style wheel. That is the long-term game plan for this build. I think it's gonna look really unique. It'll be something that nobody else has, at least that I know of. So anyways, a few companies come to mind that do this, and I'm gonna be trying to reach out to different brands and different companies that manufacture these things. We don't have the tooling in-house um, to be able to turn a uh, OEM wheel into a three-piece wheel, but I know it can be done. I'm hoping we have enough meat on these wheels and they're designed in a way that there's enough uh, mating surface to be able to do it on these wheels, which I think there is, and I'm really excited. So we're gonna have a completely custom three-piece wheel designed and built for this. And what we're gonna be doing now is we're gonna be building our wide body and everything around these wheels on these offsets and doing our test drives and stuff like that. And then when our three-piece wheels come, we know they'll fit exactly perfectly. It's how we built the Burnt Tacon. It's how we did the wide body GTR. It's a very recommended way to do it. That way you're not stuck waiting, you know, several months for wheels. And that's a wrap on this episode. In the next episode, we're gonna be taking this thing out in the streets for its very, very first test drive. I'm super, super excited to get to finally drive this thing and see how it does. There's a lot of work to do between now and then. It may like seem like it's pretty much ready to go, but there's actually a ton of work to do. So we're gonna hit it hard and we are going to get this thing on the streets and see how it does for the very first time in the next episode. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that. And thank you guys so much for all the support with all the new merch over at bsforbuild.com. I appreciate it. I hope you had a very happy holidays and a happy new year and I will see you guys in a week.